I recently came back from Kuala Lumpur and oh my goodness, I hated it. Hated it. And that's not something I say lightly. Honestly, thank goodness, most of the time I have an amazing experience when traveling abroad. The other case was, um, was uh, where was it that I didn't like it? It was in Prague, but for different reasons. I made another, another class about that. But for today, I wanna talk about why I absolutely will never ever go back to Kuala Lumpur. Like, it's a me, it's a no. It's a no for me, okay? It's a skip, pass, next, 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 never again. So, by the way, I also have a brand new mic. Like, hello, who this? I don't even know how it works. We'll figure it out. Hopefully, there's sound. So, um, food. Food is very meh. Meh. I, honestly, I'm a big foodie, and food in Kuala Lumpur was not really... It wasn't fooding okay it just wasn't fooding and i'm so i was so disappointed because you know being in the area and the region usually like southeast asia tends to be very very big on like amazing food uh i don't know it wasn't really doing it for me but the number one reason why i didn't like kuala lumpur oh my god was rude locals the locals were so rude. People were so rude, 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 rude. If rudeness was an incarnation, okay, that person or these people would just be represented by Kuala Lumpur. That's how badly it was. And honestly, I don't take this lightly. I don't expect people to just pull the red carpet wherever I go and treat me like a princess. But I mean, there's some basic common decency, you know what I mean? The only other place that I've experienced that was in Budapest. Budapest, Hungary? No. <laughs> nah, it's a no, okay? Another thing, another thing I didn't like about Kuala Lumpur is depressing. Oh my God, it's depressing AF. Like, depressing. Hear me out. I'm really someone, I really believe that every country every city every area has a soul and that's mostly why i travel because let's be honest the internet is pretty amazing nowadays you know like you can just you don't even have to go anywhere you you're watching this i don't know if you how you're consuming this you are you either watching this version on youtube or you're listening to the podcast but the point is we have amazing resources that our ancestors didn't have you know we have instagram we have tiktok we have youtube which is a plethora of information like uh, the, the the library of of knowledge that we have available at our fingertips is absolutely beyond our wildest imagination we could not even we don't even have the time to scratch the you know anyways you, you get it all this to say that me personally my number one reason why i travel is to feel a place it's to feel a place. I like to experience the soul because although you have amazing content online that's giving you an idea that can make you travel virtually, but you really need to be in a place to feel the soul of you know a certain area, like to feel the buzz. And I really believe everything is energy. And then when you're in a new place, you can feel that energy. And I'm sorry, Kuala Lumpur was not energizing. Okay, it was not, or I would say it wasn't doing the whole energy thing in the direction I wanted. Okay, it was giving sad, depressing vibes, and it reminded me the only other place I can think about for reference purposes is Berlin. I wanted to love Berlin so much, but it was just the vibe was rude and depressing okay so i'd say that yeah um i probably make should make another video about berlin but berlin i'd still give it another chance even a hungary budapest i'd still give it another chance because i want to know was it me was i in a bad mental space because i don't like to you know cancel places so quick and out of all the places that i've been to there's only the three rough experience i've had but Kuala Lumpur, it's a major X for me. I am saying it now and I'm just, uh, uh, the second I stepped out of the airport, which by the way, I wasn't planning to go there. It's because of my, my flight, there was a bunch of circumstances, you know, um, with my flights and my next flight to make it home was in like 12 hours and I was tired, exhausted. I just decided to just, you know what, let me just stay here. 
and check it out and see what it's about because my schedule is kind of flexible and oh boy i kind of like yeah you know it was a bad idea but at the same time i'm happy i got it out the way because had i planned a specific trip for malaysia i would have been sorely disappointed you know what i mean so and and it's raining non-stop that's another reason but i can't really say that the rain is the reason why it's depressing yeah i get it the rain doesn't have the same you know upbeat energy as the sunny sky but i go to london quite regularly and it's very rainy there yeah i never really feel that same uh energy you know what i mean and that negativity in the air and the atmosphere and everyone just so grumpy and rude and like no one can even like say hi which brings to my next point a lack of courtesy i noticed in kuala lumpur by the way mind you it wasn't just a touch down i ended up staying there five days five days just in the city um so i think i'm i gave it a fair shot you know what i mean first impression matters but that was more than the first impression i gave it five days six days almost like a full week so i had plenty of time to notice the lack of courtesy um it's everything you you step into the taxi they can't even say hi I, i'm like what then i started wondering is it a religion thing being a muslim country but then again i'm accustomed to life in the uae i've traveled to a lot of muslim countries like i'm not saying a lot of places men and women don't really interact but i've actually lived in palestine for like three months and i've been in the most conservative areas of palestine so i i can't say it's a religion thing um no mm -mm. like you know i've never been to a place where i step in a taxi and the person can say hi can say good morning you don't have to shake hands you don't have to look at me you don't have, but good morning good evening hello hi that's just basic politeness so and i did their equivalent of ubering quite a lot which over there is mostly grab it's you know if you travel in that area you'll be accustomed to the grab app so it's like an uber it's the local uber and i mm, mm. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't it it just wasn't it fam it was not it so i've had only one instances um okay the reason why i'm saying that is because i grabbed a lot this sounds so bad but i get it it's a catchy name grab but saying i grabbed a lot doesn't really sound yeah but anyways i use the grab service app taxi service app quite a lot because i'm a spoiled girly like that i don't like struggles okay i like everyone has their own travel style but i i don't really enjoy busing around and taking the bus and figuring out where to go i don't like that personally when i travel i like my nervous system to be as calm as possible i love adventure i like I don't mind doing like you know regular things that every you know like people are doing there the locals are doing i'm not saying i only do luxury stuff that's not what i'm saying but when it comes to transport i like it very easy and just i like the princess treatment okay um so i didn't do buses and thank goodness because i can only imagine how much more i would have encountered rude people but i stuck to the grab transport service so all this to say that i ended up taking a lot of taxis over the course of my stay there every single one of them 99 percent of them they would not say hi they would not greet you except for one instance that guy said good morning and i was just like what wait a minute whoa i had like a few like the world just stopped when i was trying to figure out oh my god okay where am i right now you know where it's just, you know when something is unexpected and it just throws you off and then you like you you quickly trying to grasp and and it took me like a good six seconds to reply back and that six seconds kind of seems really really long when someone still tells you good morning <laughs> you know it shouldn't be that long but it takes me a good amount of time to react all this to say that that was just one the only instance where someone said hi and you'd have cases where i have my bags right the taxi driver would just not even get off the car to help out which is usually customary for them to do um yeah i've had that happen so many times they would just click the button to open the truck of the car and just let you like i mean this is we're talking about this is like a muslim country where 
gender roles tend to be it's a very conservative muslim country and i'm gonna say that gender roles tend to be very predefined and it's a culture where you have the classical archetype of men being providers men being the strong the strong gender and therefore helping the female helping the woman i'm not saying i'm incapable please no no one's now no no one's people please okay um that's not what i'm saying here but i thought it was interesting to notice you know how you had that happen so many times and the other times they would get out the car just stand there and watch me just struggle with the luggage like i wasn't really sure which one was worse at least try pretend like you because what tends to happen is that they usually pretend like they're gonna help me and i'm like okay yeah and i also take my bags too let's say i have two bags a carry on and the other bag i would oh, i wouldn't just stand there like a princess you know what i mean but no there was no trying nothing so that was interesting to notice that um is it a language barrier you don't really need to speak anything it's just common non-verbal cues non-verbal universal you know cues so and then also the still going on on the whole lack of courtesy thing i've noticed in kuala lumpur is this thing absolutely drives me nuts it's when people are on their phone scrolling their TikTok and their Instagram on loud. When did this become an acceptable behavior? Honestly, the more I travel and mingle with other people, the more I realize how common courtesy and it's just not common knowledge. It's not logical to a lot of people. For me, it's logical. If I'm in a crowd of people, I'm not just going to be scrolling on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, on loud when I'm in the crowd. Even if I'm in a place that's playing music, there is something I find really aggressive about the, about the constant TikTok, next, 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 loud, obnoxious, and constantly switching. The videos barely last four or five seconds. Every four or five seconds, a new thing comes up and... And being like this for like even like a minute or two is just absolutely drives me insane, okay? And I noticed this behavior everywhere. Everywhere. And I was just like, wow. To the point I was getting so annoyed, I actually confronted one of the girls because I kind of felt it was a safe. Looking back, I should have not done it, but I was at the end of my, you know, I was just, I was just, I've, I've had it. So I was sitting in a restaurant that was very quiet. That's why I came there. And then there's two girls on their phone talking to each other. But why couldn't they talk to each other? Uh, anyways, not my business. But one girl is on the phone scrolling, scrolling, while the other friend is trying to talk to her and scrolling TikTok. And it's on loud. And I'm looking at them, trying to give them the, you know, the sign I thought was a universal one when you're looking at someone trying to let them know. Like, you know, it's like the polite way of telling them you're being rude. But nah, they weren't getting it. And then I was like, okay, but... Okay, what I said wasn't really that nice. I, I agree. I will acknowledge that. But listen, I'm not perfect, okay? And I just told them something like... I don't understand. Why did I notice that no one... Why do I notice that people don't tend to wear headphones here? Like, I know this was not really the nicest way to phrase it. But I'm like, you know what, if I'm going to talk about this with someone, okay, maybe I was a bit passive aggressive. I, yes, I was. Okay, there was a better way to go around that. I acknowledge that looking back in hindsight. But listen, those two girls were the best, safest opportunity for me to bring this on the table. And I'm like, I notice people here don't tend to use headphones and scrolling on their TikTok. You know, it's kind of rude behavior. Like, I, I mean, I'm wearing headphones right now. That's kind of the purpose of wearing headphones not you know kind of showing respect to the people around you they were probably like 16 17 oh my god she lost it like yeah we're rude like that yes mind your business or something like i was like damn like honestly i've never had any encounter like this even if i could have come at her in a more you know nicer way there was room for improvement on my side but still the aggressivity that I was, it was just adding more fuel to the fire and giving me another example that yes, there is this lack of 
common you know decency that's lacking and then i went on the internet and so many articles were talking about the same thing so yeah um now is there a lot is there a case of racism slash sexism slash colorism hell yes I'd say that now i wouldn't say it's flagrant racism per se but i think it's some sub on some subconscious level i'd say i don't really experience overt racism like this it's very important for me to say that because we're living in a world where people like to like i don't want people to be like oh my god you're using the ra the race card again no I, I don't do that you know but i also don't want people to be scared, especially all the women. I don't want them, or other women of colors, a color. I don't want them to be scared to travel around because they're thinking, oh my God, the world is out to get them. That's why I don't focus too much on these things. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of really grateful that I travel to a lot of places and 99% of the time, my experience is absolutely amazing. And I tend to have the opposite experience where People call you exotic, they're fascinated, enamored by you, by your skin, by your hair, they want to touch and whatever, in a very respectful way. And usually I kind of welcome that behavior in a way because I travel to experience cultures, but a lot of other people don't have that possibility. So me going to their villages and their cities, their countries is also a way for them to travel the world. That's how I see it so going back to that all this to say that i don't really experience racism thank goodness um it's only two instances i would say that maybe there's something there that would be in budapest hungary like i say it like i said it before and here in kuala lumpur which is not really overt racism i'd say it's mostly like i don't know maybe people have it subconsciously but it's not just me i've also read articles online by a white guy who was talking about exactly the same thing. So whereas in Budapest, I'd have that people looking at me up and down in disgust, I haven't had that in Kuala Lumpur. In Kuala Lumpur, I'd say it's more complex than that. It's more like people just are unhappy. And yes, there's some level of sexism in there. This I definitely say is a big yes. And colorism, yes. Because when I went to the supermarket, I was looking for like a body lotion like hand cream i could it was so hard for me to find hand cream and hand lotion without a whitening agent in it every almost everything had like whitening agent or it was like brightening lotion and you'd have this advertising with like the darker shade and the whitest shade so there is some element of colonialism and stuff like that post-colonialism damage you know um that you tend to see a lot in those regions of the world you see it a lot in the caribbean you see it a lot throughout africa you see it a lot in a lot of places with such tumultuous history so um yeah what else did i want to say so tips i can give if you find yourself stuck in kuala lumpur is straight up limit interaction with the locals i know it's sad it sucks but that's what it is it is what it is okay um that's why i would take grab everywhere i went just i don't want to deal with taxi trying to scam me on top of that and listen i just I, i'm like no um i'd say definitely skip that food tour there is a food tour that is very popular it comes up on TripAdvisor as a chef food tour honestly look at the pictures it's not appealing at all and i'm this is coming from a foodie here i like fine dining i like and i especially like those hole in the wall type of you know when you go to a place and then you go to like that you know mom and pop's shop that's very unassuming very simple cheap as hell all those street tacos in mexico city i was in heaven i love these sort of things you know what i mean so it's not me being snobby here at the same time cleanliness is godliness like it's very important for you know i saw some pictures where i'm like uh-uh like no so watch out with that okay another thing i would say is that's it just like the only thing i would recommend if you in the kuala lumpur from experience they say the petronas towers i mean coming from the uae it's not really something that's gonna be impressive to me i'm like okay but i get it um the good thing is you can see throughout the you know the city when you're in a taxi 
it's that overpowering over the city um the one thing i'd say that's worth going to is the batu case which is like a it's a very nice cave and then you have you would see a few Hinduism temples that were excavated through inside deep inside of the cave and on the outside I'd say this is probably like the most worthy thing to do in Kuala Lumpur and even then after I did it it was a bit underwhelming but if you there might as well but had I flown in Kuala Lumpur just to see it oof my goodness I would have been sadly disappointed so all this to say that that's it that's really all I have for sake of transparency yes I was coming from Bali does that have did that have a negative impact making my expectation be all the way up here i don't think so because i don't think so um i really thought because like i said i wasn't judging it on oh my god the architecture is not the same or the aesthetics is not the same no i was judging it on the the soul the gener the generic atmosphere and welcoming of the local people which to me is like you know, I don't think me being in Bali before that had anything to do with that. Rudeness is rudeness. When you're rude, you're just rude, period. Okay. And that was, that's pretty much my review of Kuala Lumpur. And I think it's so important to say those experiences. We're not all going to have amazing experiences. And people on the internet get so, so mad when someone comes, you know, when someone steps forward and say, I did not like X, Y, Z. We can't all love the same things. And that's why it's so important to share our various experiences because my experience is valid okay and it makes us feel less alone like less like there's something wrong with you if you go there and you don't like something so yes and again um that pretty much concludes my kuala lumpur you know uh, review and also just wanted to remind ladies watching this listening to this in the podcast that i do have my retreat coming up in malta it's a woman transformative dance retreat in malta where we're going to be in the villa with a group of 10 girls i like it very personal and intimate we are going to be using dancing to dive into the deepest part of our souls and connect and heal it's going to be a somatic type retreat and i'm really excited i'm leaving more information down below and if you happen to like kuala lumpur please leave me a comment i'm really curious to know and get the conversation going and just let's stay respectful okay there's no reason to come for me on that note thank you so much i'll see you in the next one and remember my beautiful girls that you are one of a kind and keep shining bright like a diamond bye bye see you in the next one Mwah.